Nice pants, Rose. They're called vacuum slacks. <laughs> it's supposed to inhale all the fat from your body. Nothing. Oh, come on now. I heard you laughing. What's so funny? For starters, she was a lesbian. <laughs> What's funny about that? You aren't surprised? Of course not. I mean, I've never known any personally, but isn't Daddy Thomas one? <gasps> so perfect. Oh, I didn't get any sleep last night, and I have my interview this afternoon, and I just have to tell you all about it later. I don't believe it. Neither do I. Imagine landing herself a doctor, and she still wants to finish college. <laughs> that should give them something to talk about back in Dog Patch. <laughs> Two bucks. Get wild. Treat yourself. Uh, give me a dollar fifty. What does this look like, Baghdad? Get the hell out of here! No, that's no way to sell things. Hey, go to Nima Marcus sometime, see if they teach anything. Personal's idea was really a mistake. There must be something we can do. I think we've done quite enough already, Blanche. I have an idea. I'm gonna set her up with one of my discards, Henry Barnes. He's reasonably good-looking, he drives a new Buick Riviera, and I heard he just opened a third dry-cleaning store in Boca Raton. Blanche, where are you going? I'm going to go call Henry. I have nothing to do tonight. What about Rose? Oh, tell her to call Bud Needham. Who is Bud Needham? He just took Henry's place in my discard pile. <laughs> my own children in my house. There's something else we can do. Blanche, it'll be easy. The children are dropped off in the morning and they're picked up by 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, here's something here. How about sponging? What, what's that? It says here, spongers help cool off the walkers by sponging and rubbing down their hot bodies as they pump their way through Greater Miami. Doesn't make much sense, does it, Blanche? I mean, get them all hot and then cool them down. Well, yeah, I swear sometimes you can read my mind. Here after what you've done, Dennis, I think you should be leaving. Mother Dorothy, I'm please here. not call me Mother Dorothy. I hate it when you call me Mother Dorothy. I feel like I should be handing out rice on the streets of Calcutta. <laughs> Where is Kate? Oh, she's not here. She said she was coming here. Mm -hmm. She left. Where'd she go? To meet with Gloria Steinem and Betty Friedan and Marlo Thomas. They're gonna drink white wine spritzers and try to figure out how to fry your wandering male behind. <laughs> Rose, what the hell are you doing? I'm making omelets for us without yolks so we don't get too much cholesterol. And that leaves us all these yolks, which I hate to throw out, so I thought we'd give them to the homeless. Fine, give them egg yolks. They'll die of heart attacks. They won't eat homeless. I don't know, Rose. Barbie, come on. It's worth a try. It's either we sing or he sings. Oh, all right. Oh. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> well, what? Well, well, after my boom comes your boom, and then yours until we're all booming. <laughs> How complicated is that herring thing? Well, that's not a new idea. Those Easter eggs have been around for years and years. Yes, but this one leaves a black circle around your eyes. <laughs> that practically screams Easter. And, great, in that case, you can give me back the $60 I gave you. Well, when I apologized, I said it with flowers. $60 worth? Dorothy, I may be a lot of things, but I'm not cheap. Rose Hot. Listen, I just picked up these pamphlets at a cosmetic surgeon, and I want you to help me decide which alterations I'll get. Blanche, none of these women have any tops on. Well, I know, honey, these are the after pictures of satisfied customers. I was thinking about having my breasts done like hers. All right, Blanche, but do you think black really suits you? <laughs> You told him you loved him and he didn't say it back, am I right? Did you bug my bra? 
philosophy, I told you never tell a man you love him first. That's a fatal mistake. I just wanted to hear someone say I love you to me one more time. Oh, Ma, would it make you feel better if I told you I love you? Yeah, all of a sudden I feel like singing. Take me to a piano bar. <laughs> Ma, Gladys is your best friend. She didn't do this to hurt your feelings. It was probably an accident. She must have forgotten that she already invited you. Let me tell you something, Pussycat. There are no accidents. Nobody wrongs someone without meaning it. Come on, that's ridiculous. Ah! Oh, sorry. I was going to take the stress back. I am sorry. You were sorry? Oh, come on, it was an accident. Or oh, was it? <laughs> Dear sweet single digit IQ girl. Oh, I've been tossing and turning. I can't sleep. I don't know what I'm going to do about Jason. He's reached a point in his life where he's anxious to settle down and he wants us to have another child right away. Well, frankly, I don't know if I want another baby so soon. In appearance, an Adonis. In behavior, horny as a toad. <laughs> Little did I know he had a thing for hairy fat girls. <laughs> if I were fatter and hairier, Dorothy, Marco the Goat Boy could have been your father. I think we all grieve. <laughs> Ma, that was 70 years ago. I was sure you'd forgotten. I forget nothing. What did I do? You fixed my ex-husband up with my sister. You don't see anything wrong with that? That's perfectly normal. Do you know in some primitive societies it's considered good manners to give your ex-husband to your sister? In some primitive societies, they leave their elderly out in a field for large birds to feed on. <laughs> Where do we draw the line? Right before a large bird thing. <laughs> Thor, I have a confession to make. Uh, no, Rose, I have a confession to make. Please. It has taken me nine years, ever since I heard Charlie passed away, to get up the nerve to say this. Nine years to build up the courage to tell you how I feel. Nine years to save enough money for the bus fare to Miami. <laughs> Blanche, wait, wait, wait. Listen, I mean, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Nonsense! I promise you're going to have a good time. Wait, you're going to introduce me to some of your friends? Yes, if I see anybody I know. Hey, Blanche, how's life? Well, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and I'm wearing no underwear. <laughs> God, Blanche. Blanche, God. Go ahead. Dear God, I know it's been an awful long time since I've done this, and I'm sorry. You have given me a lot to be thankful for. My wonderful children, my health, a beautiful body, legs to die for. <laughs> Just a little while longer and I'll have that thousand dollars and you will have a wonderful story to tell your poker club. No, I'm sorry, Blanche. I quit. Don't you doubt? No, no, I quit. Don't you doubt? No. Yes. Uh oh, uh oh, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like couple number 29 is out of the competition. And that little lady on the dance floor is out too unless she can find a new partner within the next minute. <laughs> It's free at the center. It's a come on. They make their real money on the pot of toilet seat rentals. So what happened to your clothes? Maury took them to have them clean. Oh. Dorothy, I still can't believe it happened. I've never been so humiliated. Ma, honey, there's no reason for you to be embarrassed. He plays tricks on everybody. I'm talking about on my way home. My belt came loose in front of a construction site. <laughs> Nobody whistled and two guys went home sick.
what do you think of this one? Dorothy, you and Elliot have been out almost every night this week. He's obviously hooked. You don't have to look good anymore. What you have on is fine. <laughs> I'll change. Oh, come on. I'll help you pick out something. There's nothing left to pick. The only thing I haven't tried on is the bedspread. I have to go pick up his favorite food and his favorite brandy and cigars. I want him to feel right at home. Then get the millers across the street to tar and feather their lawn jockey. <laughs> I'm going to go out on and I for a while. The air is always so nice and fresh after a storm. As long as you're out there, Rose, why don't you pull some weeds? Okay. <laughs> Why, yesterday you said you were going to pull the weeds. I said I'd get it done, and it's getting done, so lighten up. <laughs> My family once owned the largest tobacco plantation in all of Cuba. Do you know that at one time I was the most famous Fidel in the entire country? Until you know who showed up. <laughs> who? <laughs> hey! Hey, you got any decent nectarines? There's nothing wrong with those nectarines. Please, I got a bowl of wax bananas that'll be right before these are. <laughs> You're crazy. This nectarine is beautiful. I never saw a more perfect piece of fruit. No? Then try kissing my behind. <laughs> you did. <laughs> At the beauty parlor, don't you remember? And Agnes said you were a lot of hot air. And you said she was just jealous because she wasn't getting any. <laughs> And you said rice pudding, Rose? And I said, could we just get back to moving the furniture? Well, I guess I better be getting back to the hotel. Oh, honey, are you sure you have to? Blanche, are you asking me what I think you're asking me? Well, you might like some company tonight. Maybe some other time, Blanche. <laughs> we were all put on this planet for a purpose. Blanche, you are here to work in a museum so that art can be appreciated by humanity. Dorothy, you are here as a substitute teacher to educate our youth. And Rose, you are here because the rhythm method was very popular in the 20s. <laughs> and okay? I'm going to the movies. Goodbye. Dorothy, our director said to prepare for our roles, we must become cats. That's why I've been playing with your ball of yarn. And Blanche has been making those high-pitched screeching sounds in her room at night. You've been practicing for this part for a lifetime, haven't you? I was still in high school at the time, and I was having an affair with a very handsome exchange student named Jean-Pierre Fontainebleau. <laughs> I think he was French or something. <laughs> he was always sneering and he wore a beret. We were never allowed to wear berets when I was in high school. It was against the St. Olaf dress code. <laughs> they did let me wear a paper cap a lot. It was long and pointy. There's a lot more than that to Blanche Devereaux. My dream was to be a great scientist, work in a laboratory, do research, find a cure for the common cold. You know, Blanche, I owe you an apology. I really thought... Well, I'd knock all those test tubes off the table, grab a PhD, and show those lab rabbits how it's really done. Well, I think tonight's sizable cash contribution should lay those accusations to rest. It doesn't even care about the dry street, Jesus. It's a miracle. It's going to be easy. easy. But don't take any chances. Sleep with him anyway. <laughs> You know that popcorn reminds me of Vex's driving out at the lake. <laughs> you remember the night my date and I parked right next to you and your date? Pretty soon it got to be a contest who could fog up whose car the fastest. <laughs> I think you won. Uh, you weren't doing too badly considering you were in a convertible. <laughs> Ma, Ma, I think you better sit down. Come on, over here. Move down. <coughs> Dorothy, should I get Sophia a glass of water? No, Rose, you should sit here and watch her hack herself to death. <laughs> Are you sure? Get the water! Hey, that's not my fault. <laughs> Look, you're mine. Oh, I just love 
coal mine. It's all on account of my Uncle Gustav. He was a coal miner. <laughs> you mean a coal miner? No, a coal miner. You see, he had a bad back, and he didn't want to lose his medical benefits, so every morning he'd go down the shaft and pretend to work. <laughs> I knew there was something wrong with him. No, he's not lousy. Well, I don't think he is. Well, either he is or he isn't. Well, I'm sure he's not. Of course, I have no proof that he's not, but still he's not. <laughs> I don't get it. Neither does Rose. He was neat, she was sloppy, he was tall, she was short. He was cheap, she was extravagant. <laughs> He was opposites. We get the picture. What are you talking about? I've been all day getting ready. <laughs> oh, I could just scratch your eyes out. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Drop dead. <laughs> What's wrong? Nothing. Well, don't wait up. I'll run. Good night. Blanche, <laughs> Steve called and canceled your date, didn't he? Yes. How did you know that, Dorothy? I'm clairvoyant, Rose. <laughs> then one night, bingo, she closes her eyes and she's gone. She died in her sleep. What are you, deaf? I said she died playing bingo. <laughs> well, I guess Phyllis Gluckman will be my new best friend. Ma, I thought you hated Phyllis Gluckman. I do, but the rate my friends are going, I won't have to spend that much time with him. <laughs> Ma, you've been in there for 20 minutes. Now, what are you doing? Painting a fresco on the ceiling. It's a bathroom. What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> what are you writing? Well, nothing. What do you mean, nothing? What is that? Well, Ma, you have such a great sense of humor, and I can never remember all the funny things you say, so I've decided to keep a journal. A journal? Who the hell are you, Bill Moyers? <laughs> But I told everyone at the club that Bob Hope wasn't going to be in the show. They actually booed me. Oh! I've never been so humiliated in my entire life. Oh, come on. You've been humiliated plenty. <laughs> Remember when you tried out for cheerleading in high school? Ma, why do you constantly look for ways to amuse yourself at my expense? Because we don't have cable and I can't crochet. <laughs> Dorothy, just relax. Oh, your mother is a responsible woman. She knows how long it took us to save that money. You can trust her. Don't get mad. Ma, did you buy the CD today? Not exactly. I said don't get mad. Sophia, what did you do with our money? I think you're going to be really impressed. I made a very shrewd deal with a guy I met at the bus stop. Oh. <laughs> Trudy and I played a lot of practical jokes on each other. It was all part of a happy, healthy rivalry. Oh, I was the butt of all kinds of jokes growing up. Actually, it ran in the family. In our breakfast room, we had one whole wall covered with kick me signs we had collected. <laughs> There was a story attached to each one of them, and in some cases, the original Scotch tape. And in no mood to hear a story about you and some Yahoo cracker with four first names <laughs> pawing at each other under a magnolia tree. <laughs> Pardon me, Dorothy, but we can't all come from places as socially acceptable as Brooklyn. <laughs> all that was left were a few deposit slips and a pen with a chain attached to it floating in the muck. <laughs> Amazing. My story? No, my patience at this hour. <laughs> Can we get on with this? Okay. I'll go first. Thank oh. you. Oh, <laughs> She's attractive, witty, and great fun to be with. This must be Dorothy. And she's smart, sexy, and stylish to a fault. This must be Blanche. <laughs> Did I get it right? You're right. Oh, thank goodness I worried all the way over here. I'd get it backwards. <laughs> I could have lived with smart and sexy. <laughs> you do live with smart and sexy. <laughs> oh, hi, girls. Did you all find Lillian? You bet we did. And that sunny pastures was everything that Mars said it would be. And how there was crud on the floor, rocks in the hallway, and 60 people to every blanket. It wasn't fit for human life. 
Although in my village in Sicily, it would have been a two-star motel. <laughs> Sophia, do you think I could take a bath before breakfast? It's been a while. Yeah, let me help. She's my friend. I want to help her. Oh, it's just wonderful to think about, isn't it? The two of them together, and they're so cute. <laughs> Thinking about your breasts again, aren't you? <laughs> but believe me, there was nothing in this world I hate more. I spoke too soon. <laughs> it's me, Stan. Wait, let me rephrase that. It's me, the new Stan. What are you talking about? Don't you notice a difference? Can't you see the glow? Can't you see the light radiating off of me? Sure, it's the porch light glaring off your head. <laughs> Can't you find a better place to clip your toenails? Don't call me Ma. Call me Sophia like my other friends. Ma, I am very upset, so please stop teasing me. Dorothy, I've never told this to anyone before. The day I left the hospital with you, I had a gnawing feeling in the pit of my stomach. Because you suspected I wasn't your daughter? No, because I was in labor for 38 hours. Girls, Count Bessie is missing. I went out to the garage to feed her and her cage was empty. Where could she be? Guess what I found? Fernando! <laughs> uh, that's not Fernando. Well, what do you mean that's not Fernando? How could you tell? All you have to do is look in his eyes. <laughs> or the price tag stuck to his back. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Thanks for trying, Blanche. It's nice to know I have a friend like you who cares. <laughs> Tails, you win. I'll make it up to you, Dorothy, I promise. Listen, if there's ever a night where you can't sleep, I'll come to your room and sing Kumbaya. <laughs> Rose, I don't know what to say. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> don't ever do that. Oh, that does it. Rose, I would never lie about the U.S. space program. <laughs> Awkward when it comes to my body, huh? No coordination? You want to see a body defy the laws of nature, physics, and Dade County? <laughs> Just hit that music girl and follow my lead. <laughs> Look into my eyes. <laughs> oh, well, let me introduce my friends. This is Rose and Brian. <laughs> oh, what a charming old world couple. Welcome to my family. <laughs> my question is Sandra, una donna di scuola. What'd she say? Uh, she says that she wants to thank you for your gracious welcome. Oh, my Italian must really be rusty. I could swear she asked if you were a street walker. But believe me, there was nothing in this world I hate more. I spoke too soon. <laughs> it's me, Stan. Wait, let me rephrase that. It's me, the new Stan. What are you talking about? Don't you notice a difference? Can't you see the glow? Can't you see the light radiating off of me? Sure, it's the porch light glaring off your head. <laughs> we had pancakes yesterday. Lillian, you weren't here yesterday. Here you are, honey. Nice cup of tea. Lillian, Sophia tells me that you were in the Ziegfeld Palace. Oh, yes. Mm. Those were the days. <laughs> you must have been something. I was quite a looker. Oh. <laughs> Almost as pretty as you. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> of course, I had bigger breasts. <laughs> Those directions she gave me for meeting you guys for lunch were totally wrong. Oh, come on now, Rose. You don't think she did that to you on purpose? Well, I do. Oh, honey, that's silly. You don't know Holly. She just got her directions all mixed up. It was a mistake. Just like it was a mistake eating me out of dinner at Antonio's and a mistake leaving me home for the play. Rose, you are overreacting to this. Now, calm down. Let's just go and enjoy the movie. What movie? <laughs> All that was left were a few deposit slips and a pen with a chain attached to it floating in the muck. <laughs> Amazing. My story? No, my patience at this hour. <laughs> Can we get on with this? Okay. I'll go first. Oh. Oh, 
the most energetic, alive person I ever knew. At the center, Dorothy, we teach acceptance. In life, there are some things that are inevitable, and you just have to accept them. She is right, Dorothy. I know because I've been there myself. You killed your best friend, too, then? <laughs> Trudy and I played a lot of practical jokes on each other. It was all part of a happy, healthy rivalry. Oh, I was the butt of all kinds of jokes growing up. Actually, it ran in the family. In our breakfast room, we had one whole wall covered with kick me signs we had collected. <laughs> Oh, there was a story attached to each one of them, and in some cases, the original scotch tape. Which is exactly the amount of each girl's life savings. Exactly? That's why this is a story instead of an immigration report. <laughs> May I continue? One girl chooses to spend her money and take a chance on adventure. The other plays it cautiously and books only a ferry to Sardinia, saving the rest of her money for a rainy day. <laughs> When I told everyone at the club that Bob Hope wasn't going to be in the show, they actually booed me. Oh! I've never been so humiliated in my entire life. Oh, come on. You've been humiliated plenty. <laughs> Remember when you tried out for cheerleading in high school? Come on, why do you constantly look for ways to amuse yourself at my expense? Because we don't have cable and I can't crochet. <laughs> I was talking about your fable. Listen, Rose, I've come up with an idea. Now, with your stories and my illustrations, we just might have a bestseller here. What do you say to us teaming up and writing a kid's storybook together? Oh, Blake, that's a terrific idea. <laughs> oh, when my children were small, I bought those big illustrated storybooks all the time. And I bet your kids loved them. No, they had their own books. <laughs> <laughs> understand how people can run around showing their naked bodies to total strangers. It's disgusting. It's sickening. It's terrible. Yoo-hoo! Blanche, would you please get away from that window for two seconds? Come here a minute. I want you to see this guy playing volleyball. Blanche, will you stop acting like a teenager? You have seen naked men before. What is the big deal? Woo. <laughs> is that a legal serve? He was neat, she was sloppy, he was tall, she was short. He was cheap, she was extravagant. <laughs> he was opposites, we get the picture. Oh, Ma, come on, do you really expect us to believe that you're going to go through with this? Believe what you want, Dorothy. Sicilians take these things very seriously. You know what might happen to me if I didn't do my duty? What? Free swimming lessons with a cement kickboard. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rose, Blanche's roommate. Hi, Rose. <laughs> Won't you come in? Could you uh, give me a hand? Well, sure. <laughs> so, that's okay, I'll, I'll use this. Uh, come in. Thank you. Oh, uh, how do you do, John? I'm, uh, I'm Dorothy, I'm Blanche's other roommate. Hello, Dorothy. And I'm her gorgeous 22-year-old cousin. <laughs> Hey, that's not my fault. <laughs> Look, to mine. Oh, I just love a mime. It's all on account of my Uncle Gustav. He was a coal mimer. <laughs> you mean a coal miner? No, a coal mimer. You see, he had a bad back, and he didn't want to lose his medical benefits, so every morning he'd go down the shaft and pretend to work. <laughs> There's only one thing that does that for me. Cooking a big meal. No, making love in a closet. <laughs> there you do what you can. Hi, <laughs> we're back. Oh. We helped Stan pick out a ring for Catherine. I feel terrible. I think we spent too much money. Oh, stop worrying about the money. You were talking about love. I still think we spent too much. You didn't spend it. The yachts spent it. <laughs> That's what makes them a yachts. I was never any good at blind dating. I always felt so awkward. Oh, Dorothy, I have a surefire icebreaker I can teach you right now. Oh, once you learn this, any man is putty in your hands. Oh, Blanche, come on, that is ridiculous. I mean, I'm certainly not going to waste my time listening to this adolescent nonsense. Did you say putty? <laughs> Let me handle this. <clears throat> Uh, listen here, mister, now I would like to have a word with you. I paid good money for that jacket, and before you walk out of here with it, why, there's something that I want to say to you. What? 
The zipper sticks a little. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You had a good time and you never had a stand in line. We love the stay in chat, but we want to get settled in our new place. <laughs> Say bye. Bye bye. bye, bye. Come back to the time. We forgot something. We forgot to get a new place. Warm summer nights, sitting in the bleachers, eating hot dogs, rooting for the Dodgers and kissing passionately between innings. Back there, you never took me to Abbott's <laughs> No? No! Oh, it must have been one of the guys from work. Yeah, that's it, that's it. I've heard enough. Please, Dorothy, you'll have the time of your life. The time of my life? Stan, the last time you said that, it took 12 seconds. <laughs> I'm giving the leftover meatloaf a throw. <laughs> what do you think? It's hot as hell in here. Close it before the food spoils. Okay. <laughs> I meant the refrigerator. <laughs> I'm going to call the repairman. I already did. He said he'd be over in 15 minutes. That was three hours ago. Well, let's break out the ice cream. What's this? It throws my underwear to stay cool. <laughs> we caught you cheating. Ma, you're out of the game. Hey, give me a break. When you're 80, you're allowed to cheat, just like you're allowed to take money out of your daughter's purse. <laughs> uh, was that the phone? Well, don't kill yourselves. I'll get it. Don't you just love waking up with rain tapping on your bedroom window? Oh, absolutely. I always throw open the window, uncork a bottle of cold duck, and slip into my Fredericks of Hollywood ostrich feather nodder. Just because of rain tapping at your window? Oh, I thought she said rain. I just hate you. <laughs> I regret the day you ever moved in here. And I regret the day I gave birth to you. <laughs> Ma, Ma, I'm your daughter. Oh, yeah. I need a bonus seltzer. I need a cheesecake. What are you doing out there? Uh, checking the sprinkler system. <laughs> Looks good. Good night. You get yourself in here. Get in here. Where in the world did you come from? The coffee shop at the bus station. <laughs> I went there from the hospital to, you know, think things out. But this toothless old wino who claimed he was Elvis kept hounding me for bus fare to Graceland. <laughs> You'll have to excuse my mother. She recently had a stroke, and uh, her perception is a little, uh, you know, distorted. Oh, yeah, I understand. No, you know. <laughs> Why don't we start out with a tour of the house, and later on we'll sit down and go over that application you filled out. Oh, wonderful. Oh, your house is just... Breathtaking. I know. <laughs> you said it looked like a dump from the outside. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay, but you don't know what you're missing. There aren't many guys around who remember where they were when the Archduke Ferdinand was shot. <laughs> oh, Rose, honey, now don't let this personal thing depress you. Dorothy, I can't help it. I haven't been this depressed since I was rejected by Uncle Sam. <laughs> Well, honey, if he was your uncle, it wasn't meant to be. I'm walking since 1904. Besides, they have a category for people over 80. I think it's a terrific idea. Maybe we ought to join. We already did. What did you say? I said we already did. Rose, I work all week. The last thing I want to do is walk 10 miles on a Saturday. We won't be walking. We're going to sit. Oh, now that's fine by me. I like to sit. We know. It's your second favorite position. <laughs> what are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do, Rose. We're going to eat a cheesecake. <laughs> Hi, Ma. Shouldn't you be finishing those invitations? Just here for a glass of water. The stamp looking dries me out. Why don't you use a sponge? I feel more comfortable drinking out of a glass. <laughs> well, now I know why Hemingway killed himself. Oh, girls, I have writer's block. It is the worst feeling in the world. Try 10 days without a bowel movement sometimes. <laughs> You 
just sit there hour after hour after hour. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> this really was a good idea. This is really fun. Oh, shut up, Rose. <laughs> is it my, my turn? Yeah. <laughs> I buy for Rose. Oh, thank you, dog. <laughs> oh, no, no, Rose, you can't pick yourself. Oh, thank goodness. I'm so hard to shop for. <laughs> Honey, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. Well, anyway, all the same, I better get busy writing down my activities. And I better call Simon and cancel our date for tonight. You know, I'm really starting to care about him and... I wouldn't want him worrying about my recording his performance. <laughs> you know how fragile men's egos are. One little thing like screaming out the wrong name and they go all to pieces. <laughs> I I'm worried oh, about you. please, don't you start. I had a problem 15 years ago. That's a long time. I've learned a little something since then. A lot has happened. And I've lived with the temptations. Well, isn't that something? You think you know somebody, then you find out something like this. Hard to believe. I'll see. To think Dorothy's lived with the temptations. I've never even been to one of their concerts. <laughs> oh, Rose, good God. My heart is still pounding. I was just in an accident. Oh, but don't worry, I'm all right. I'm okay. Oh, thank God. Any damage to your car? Well, that's the one bright spot. I had borrowed yours. <laughs> my car? You didn't ask if you could borrow my car. Well, I guess we both learned a lesson about leaving keys on the table. <laughs> well, I can't believe this. How did it happen? Oh, you're still the handsomest man I know. And you're still the prettiest thing I ever did see. Oh. Now I know why they call it the Deep South. <laughs> <laughs> You remember everybody? Oh, ladies, it is so good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. <laughs> all right now, baby brother. I've waited all week. Where is it? Where's my surprise? Hello, everyone. <laughs> Yankee. What? A Yankee doodle. Oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, did I mention her last name was Feldman? <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't be. I can't be Jewish. I'll be damned. The black guy is prejudiced. Paul. Ah, oh, Ma, here's a letter for you from Palermo. Oh, it's the latest chess move for my old rival, Serafini Gambrazzi. Ah, oh, how long has this chess game by mail been going on? What, it must be ten years now, huh? And it's going to keep on going until I beat Serafina at something. What are you talking about? Picture it. Sicily, 1920. Seraphine and I were both crazy about Marco, the goat boy. The doctor feels that if you would maybe join me at a session or two, I might be able to work through my attachment that much sooner. What do you say, babe? I don't know. I mean, I'd, I'd have to give it some thought. Jerry, hello. Hello, Rose. I'm sorry about all this. Oh, sorry. There's no need to be sorry. I'm a man who acknowledged you had a problem, and I'm seeing somebody about it. Uh, uh, goodbye, Stan. <laughs> He's our mailman. You know where Scout is? Look, I'm sorry I gave the stick to your sister when you were a kid. And I'm um, sorry about the other thing, too. You mean about giving Stan to Gloria? Yeah, that and the stick. I'm sorry about those two things. You know what, Mom? I love you. And I'm glad you're safe. And I forgive you. You make me sick. Oh. Morning, Blanche. How was your date last night? Huh. How was my date last night? I woke up alone. That's how my date was last night. <laughs> He didn't open my car door. He did not escort me into the restaurant, didn't pull out my chair. And then when the check came, he made me pay half the bill. <laughs> what did I ever do to deserve that? Sounds to me like you put out before dinner again. A blessing for the couple. You invited a rabbi to a moonlight madness party? May God bless and oi! <laughs> oh, look, a holy man in need of help. <laughs> Let me help you, old holy man. 
Lucas is waiting. <laughs> You're angels. All of them. First of all, there is no such thing as a curse. Now, all right, we've had a little bad luck, but ladies, I mean, that's life. I mean, when you look at it, has anything that out of the ordinary really happened? This isn't the Orange Bowl, is it? She originally hails from St. Olaf, Minnesota, where she was voted the girl most likely to get stuck in a tuba. Welcome, Rose Milan! <laughs> and last but not least is a grandmother of six, Sophia Petrollo. Sophia, it says here that you and Dorothy are mother and daughter. No, Guy. Rose is my daughter now. And you, Dorothy, are the biggest disappointment to hit the streets since the AMC Pacer. She's going into renal failure, so a transplant is her best hope. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. What happens if she doesn't get your kidney? She'll die. You hold her life in your hands? What are you going to do? I don't know. I'm glad you're not my sister. <laughs> I was too shocked, and I didn't know how to tell him. And to tell the truth, I don't even know what I want to tell him. What do you mean? I mean that I am totally confused about what I feel. Hi, Stan. Hello, Stan. Blanche, Rose, don't leave on my account. No, they have to. They're hitching up the house to the car and entering it in the Rose Parade. <laughs> Jean thinks she's in love with Rose. <laughs> Ma, come on, it's not funny. <laughs> the hell it's not. Jean in love with little Miss Muffet. Come on! <laughs> no one garage. Marona Stanza Daletto. Stanza Daletto? Sofia, tu mi hai detto che un garage di prima classe, ti ho dato un garage di prima classe. Eh. It was a slight misunderstanding. You see, in Sicily, every region has its own dialect. Actually, every town has its own dialect. Actually, every household has its own dialect. <laughs> This also explains why the Italian army is as effective as the Jamaican bobsled team. Are you about to educate us on the evils of wasting time by telling a long, tedious St. Olaf story? <laughs> You know a better way? <laughs> There's a point, Blanche. It was back in 1955, and we had just moved into our first house right next door to Pink Pen Johansson. <laughs> Sophia, what in hell is going on here? He's a man, I'm a woman, I've got what it takes, and he knows how to use it. I think I'm going to lose my lunch. <laughs> Blanche, listen. Fidel, don't you go call it for her. Look, we happen to be an item. I'm wearing his medical alert bracelet. <laughs> When did this start? Well, I have been allergic to penicillin ever oh, since. Oh, not bad. You should just go along with whatever she wants to do. The important thing is to keep Rose's mind occupied. Hey, give me some lipstick. I'll draw a face on my hand. <laughs> Now, what are you doing up? I've got an hour till my paper route starts, so I thought I'd do some chin-ups. <laughs> Boy, Trudy is beating the dickens out of Dorothy. Oh, I, I just have to 
catch my breath. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to play or do you want to forfeit? No way. Now, Dorothy Zbornak doesn't know the meaning of the word forfeit. And she's a teacher, too. <laughs> The Japanese are ahead of us. Well, Pussycat, you better get some sleep. The big fight's tomorrow. Words that have echoed from mother to daughter since time began. <laughs> okay, so I don't turn a phrase like Harriet Nelson. You still better get some sleep. I can't, Ma. I'm too nervous. About the money? No, Ma. I'm always a wreck the night before any welterweight Division B matchup at the local arena. <laughs> I heard that ticket sales are not going very well. I heard that you have not been able to find any good talent, and I heard that Kent Ferguson has canceled and we don't have an MC for the show. Yeah, well, I heard that you've been sleeping with a Japanese guy who blows the leaves out of your driveway. <laughs> Hello, this is Dorothy Spornak. I'd like to confirm my reservation on flight 505 to Orlando. Uh-huh. Uh, now... Let's go over the arrangements I made to have my mother taken away at the departure gate. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about? Neither do I. Goodbye. Obviously there's some confusion. Sunny Meadows is a clothing optional resort. You mean the nudist camp? Oh, well, we didn't know that. <laughs> Who made the reservation? Well, don't look at me. Rose, you made the reservation. I know. I just don't want you looking at me. <laughs> Dora, this born act, are you just getting in? No, Blanche. I, I got up early and went jogging in a park with a really strict dress code. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I need some coffee. <laughs> What's the number of the police station? Is there anything wrong, Sophia? Nah, I just want to find out where I can buy the best donuts. <laughs> of course, something is wrong. Now, what's going on, Ma? Okay. I hope they could spare you this, Dorothy. Well, it's best you know what's going on. It's about Sonny Venduccio, as in the famous Venuccio Vendetta. I never heard of that. Who asked you? This is a speech, not a quiz. <laughs> I don't want to mention any names. Follow my eyes. <laughs> okay, that's it for practice today. Everybody get a good night's sleep. <laughs> Coach Dorothy, can we make your grade together and we divide it? Oh, I'm sorry. Nice try. You're beginning to think like a fourth grader already. I told you it wouldn't work. <laughs> oh, thanks. I think I'll run along now. Nice meeting you, Mr. John Quinn. Thank you. Same here, Blanche. Uh... Better row. Good night. Good night. Blanche. Yes? I know you're going to think I'm a hypocrite for this, but is there any way I could call you for dinner sometime? Only one way I can think, huh? What? By looking at that napkin, my number's on it. <laughs> Good night. Wow, well, uh, what have we decided? Pass, Pass job. job. <laughs> Bye. I'll do what I can. Well, goodbye. No, where are you going? It's my day to volunteer at the hospital. Oh, Sophia, you know it's really sweet of you to volunteer. I like charity work. Besides, I've got my eye on an eligible doctor for Dorothy. I hope he likes charitable work, too. <laughs> I think Lisa Benet spent more on the ring than her nose. <laughs> Don't listen to her, Stanley. It's beautiful. I'm sure Catherine will love it. You mean it? Not a word. <laughs> Babe, it's a real diamond. What's wrong with it? I think the more appropriate question is, where is it? <laughs> okay, the diamond's not very big. <laughs> Okay, it's not a real diamond. Oh, this is such a warm, wonderful moment. Oh, I just wish I spoke Italian so I'd know what they were saying. <laughs> what about me? Could I be a goddess too? No, no. You are an earth mother. Sweet, compassionate, but bubbling with sensuality just below the surface. Oh, that's a relief. All this time I thought it was gas. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. If Tyson has another fight, you may want to settle up in the wreck hall. This is all hard to believe. <laughs> if it's not true, my name isn't Sophia P. Hawkins. <laughs> Excuse me.
don't listen to Brian. All right, it was his bathtub, and we were blowing suds off of each other when she walked in. Blanche, what is the point of this story? Poet. Well, there's no poet. I just like telling it. Dorothy, have we met? Not yet. I'm here because of your ad in the paper. Willing to do anything, eight dollars an hour, no job too big or small. Yes, yes, of course. Please come in. I'm sorry, I didn't expect people to actually come here. I just figured, you know, that I would be going to them. That's the way it'll work in the future, when my video camera gets back from the shop. <laughs> Well, the new owners of the building don't allow cats, and I'm not about to part with Mr. Peepers. Oh, I guess you two have been through a lot together, huh? Yes. I found him last week. But I, I wouldn't feel right having a home if he didn't. He would become very attached to you. You know, I think that shows great strength of character. I like you, and I like cats. I also happen to have a room for rent, and my name is Blanche Devereaux. Why would you name a room Blanche Devereaux? Do you remember the first day you went to school? No. I do. You looked so adorable in that pink and white polka dot dress. I love that dress. Even after you outgrew it, it was tucked away in an upstairs closet for years. You put it away for sentimental reasons? No, your brother Phil hid it there. <laughs> he used to like to wear it when he visited the firehouse. Oh, isn't it nice to see your brother and sister who are such good friends? It certainly is. <laughs> oh, I always wish that I could have been closer to my brother Phil. You know, go places together, share experiences. Although I did love borrowing his clothes. Did you like wearing boys' clothes growing up? No, but fortunately neither did my brother Phil. <laughs> so Phil, she's right. Three palm trees. Ten thousand dollars. Oh my God, we just won $10,000. $10,000? Oh, oh, I don't believe it. $10,000? Split four ways, that's almost $2,000 apiece. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm so and your neighborhood and or trailer park has been accepted. This is the happiest, most fulfilling day of my life. Which makes you the most pathetic human being on this planet. <laughs> I love Elvis. Oh, Blanche, I would be honored if you would be the first member of the Hunka Hunka Burnin' Love Fan Club. I graciously accept and promise to do a good job as president. <laughs> Hi, Ma. Oh, where'd you been? Just looking through the old photo album. Boy, you are a cute kid. Yeah, I was sort of cute. Oh, look, there I am at seven. An angel. Uh, here I am at eleven. <laughs> Adorable. Oh, look, here I am at 15. The beginning of the end. <laughs> hey, my friend! How are you? Oh, hi! What nice dog of you are! Oh, hey, dog! Hey, dog! Oh, thank you, Blanche. That was a great idea. It's great bringing two idiots closer together. <laughs> I think that's the motto of the St. Olaf Telephone Company. I thought I heard voices in here. What you guys doing? Oh, nothing. We're just sitting talking. I'm not talking about anything special. The subject of aliens never came up. <laughs> Hello, xin chào các bạn. Đây là cây hoa hồng. Ra rất là nhiều hoa nhưng mà nó lụi vợi rồi Cây hồng rất là cao Nhà cháu sắp xong rồi bạn Vâng còn một ít nữa thôi họ đang làm lốt đây là cái lụ hoa Bây giờ bây giờ bây giờ 
Thank you.